All right, guys, we are back, and today is Benchmark Day. So here's a system that I put together in my last video. If you guys didn't check that out, make sure you take a look in the description. There is a link below to that video. But uh, here it is in all of its glory. I did remove the drive cages like you guys suggested, and uh, I'm not sure if I like it, to be honest. The uh, improved airflow is nice. There's definitely a lot more space uh, inside the case, but I don't really like the rails that you see here without the uh, drive cages mounted. It looks kind of funny, but I'm not gonna put all that crap back in now, so we're just gonna leave it as is. So I hope you guys like it at least. But anyways, for you guys that didn't see the last video, um, I'm just gonna go over the specs one more time of this build. We got, uh, for the CPU, the AMD Ryzen 7 1700. It's running at uh, stock frequencies. For now, overclocking coming soon. For the CPU, we are running the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 3. For the RAM, we are running 16 gigabytes of HyperX Fury running at 2666 megahertz. For the motherboard, we have an Asus Crosshair 6 Hero. This is on the X370 chipset, by the way. For the graphics card, we have an Asus Strix GTX 1070. For the power supply, we have a Be Quiet Dark Power Pro 11 running at 650 watts. For the storage, we have a 480 gigabyte Toshiba OCZ Tryon 150 SSD, and everything is stuffed into this Be Quiet Dark Base Pro 900. Now, with that said, there are a couple things I do want to go over before we uh, get into the benchmarks. First thing is I did update the BIOS. We are running on the latest uh, publicly available one, which is uh, version 1002. As for the power plan, I am running AMD's Ryzen Balance Power Plan. They just made this available not too long ago on their uh, community website, so I went ahead and installed that. Uh, GPU driver wise we're running on uh, 381.65 and for the GPU itself no overclock but I have changed the power limit to uh, 120% and the core voltage to plus 100%. Now it is worth mentioning that all of these benchmarks are done three times and an average score calculated. And I do have a mix of productivity and gaming that we're gonna take a look at here today. So let's start with the productivity stuff. So uh, in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2017, uh, shout out to the seven day free trial for making this benchmark possible, by the way. We have some 4K GH5 test footage from Newman Films. Uh, it's about a 40 second clip with one LUT enabled and we are rendering this using the uh, YouTube 1080p preset. Now using the CPU based render, it took the 1700 one minute and 14 seconds. Now compared to the 8370, we can see it took a little bit longer at two minutes and 23 seconds. Now it is worth noting that using the uh, CUDA acceleration or GPU based rendering, uh, it actually destroyed both CPUs in this case, taking uh, 36 seconds on the 1700 build and a minute five seconds on the 8370 build. Now, moving on to Blender, we are using the uh, BMW benchmark, which is freely available on the Blender website under their demo files. So for the CPU to render this file, it took uh, five minutes and 45 seconds for the 1700 and 15 minutes and 44 seconds for the 8370. Now I should mention this is probably my least favorite benchmark to run for obvious reasons. It took the 8370 freaking forever to do this test. Now there was also a, a GPU based rendering file included with this uh, benchmark as well. So using that particular file, the GPU took three minutes and 10 seconds to render. While it took the 8370 build three minutes and 15 seconds to render. So again, it looks like GPU based rendering is the way to go. Now, moving on to a synthetic benchmark, we are using Cinebench, which uses your CPU cores to render a 3D photorealistic image. In this case, on the multi-threaded score, we got 1395 for the Ryzen 7 1700 and 638 for the FX 8370. On the single threaded test, we got 130 for the 1700 and 101 for the 8370. So much closer score there. From there, we jumped into some more synthetic benchmarks using uh, Asus RealBench to run a, a couple of tests. The first one here is GIMP image editing, which simulates a photo editing workload, which opens up uh, various photos and applies filters to them, like color correction, uh, blurring, all that kind of stuff. And it calculates how long it takes to complete that process. By the way, this test is focused more on single-threaded and RAM performance. 
So in this case, it took the 1736.92 seconds to complete the task, and the 8370, it took 54.83 seconds. Then also in Real Bench, we use the uh, Handbrake Video Compression Test, which basically encodes a 1080p H.264 file. In this case, we are measuring multi-threaded performance, and in this case, it took 36.30 seconds for the 1700 to complete the task, compared to the FX8370, which was way behind at 83.4 seconds. So as we can see in these tests so far, anything that's multi-threaded, the 1700 is gonna dominate the 8370 pretty easily. Now jumping into some gaming, we are starting with Battlefield 1, which is a pretty CPU intensive game. This is on the uh, Storm of Steel single player map running uh, DX11, high preset, GPU memory restriction off. And all of these gaming tests, by the way, are run at uh, 1080p as we want to put the focus on the CPU and not run into any GPU limitations. So for the 1700, we had a minimum frame rate of 72.17 and an average frame rate of 130.65. And as we can see here with the frame times, everything looks pretty smooth. No uh, outlying dips that you would notice. Game ran pretty smooth here in single player mode. Now it is worth mentioning that if you jump into like a 64 player conquest map, your performance is gonna dip a little bit, but the game is more than playable and more than smooth in either scenario. Now the next benchmark I ran was Dishonored 2 on the Karnaka Docks map. This is on the ultra preset, uh, FOV of 90 and adaptive resolution off. For the 1700, we had a 47.76 as the minimum frame rate and 90.47 as the average frame rate. Now in this particular part of the map, this is actually probably the most demanding area that I've reached in the game thus far. Uh, and you can see there are several dips down below 60 FPS, which you will notice in this uh, particular area. Also, it's worth mentioning that this game does have a 120 FPS cap now, which I did not know before downloading like the 40 gigabyte file or uh, whatever it was. So. Um, I did kind of crank up the settings just to make sure we didn't actually just sit at that 120 mark the entire time. But again, this is a demanding area and you will see some dips here. So it was still playable with the 1700 and the 1070, but on the other end, when you combine the 8370 with the 1070, you notice the dips a lot more. So in this case, we had a minimum frame rate of 31.63 and an average frame rate of 55.10. So pretty big difference there in uh, performance and definitely you will notice those uh, minimum frame rate dips. Now, moving on to probably the smoothest playing game in PC history, we have Doom. This is on the uh, Foundry map running on the Vulkan API, high preset, TSSAA on. For the 1700, we had a minimum frame rate of 121.98 and an average frame rate of 178.39. Now again, in this case, we can see pretty much, uh, there are some spikes, but it's pretty much from high to higher to high to higher. <laughs> so there's really nothing that you will notice in game when it comes to dips here. This is uh, by far the smoothest playing game of any game that's uh, being tested here today. Even the 8370 had a pretty enjoyable experience with minimum frame rates of 107.62 and average frame rate of 172.19. Now jumping over to a DX12 benchmark, we're taking a look at Forza Motorsport 6 Apex. This is on the uh, Brands Hatch Track Indie Circuit. We are running on high settings and MSAA at 4X. In this case, we had a minimum frame rate of 17.43 and average frame rate of 110.10. Now in this case, we definitely do notice some dips when we are playing in game, pretty much like every CPU I've tested up until this point with this game. Uh, anything that's gonna be high in traffic or running through any type of puddles is going to drop the frame. So in this case, we actually have a spike way down to below 20 FPS and then with a couple below 60. So you definitely will notice those spikes here and there. For the most part, the game is playable, but it does have those unfortunate dips here and there. And as we can see in comparison, uh, the 8370 had a minimum frame rate of 15.15 and an average frame rate of 70.51. Now, jumping over to another CPU intensive game, we have Grand Theft Auto V. Now, this is running at a very high settings, MSAA at uh, by two and advanced graphics off. In this case, we're running the CAN benchmark uh, basically what I do here is just average the uh, FPS from all of the scenes together, and that's how we have our numbers here. 
So for the 1700, we had a minimum frame rate of 36.49 and an average frame rate of 106.47. And for the 8370, in this case, we actually ended up having a higher minimum frame rate for some reason of 38.86 and an average frame rate of 78.99. Now, for whatever reason, I wasn't able to capture the frame times of this CAN benchmark, so I don't have a frame time graph, unfortunately, in this case, but you guys know how uh, GTA 5 plays pretty much at this point. Now, moving on to our last title, we are looking at The Witcher 3. This is on the Nilf Guardian connection, high preset, hair works off, and post-processing on high. For the 1700, we had minimum frame rates of 32.32, an average frame rates of 107.58. Now for some reason, this frame time graph always looks pretty crazy, but I can assure you in game, it's actually pretty damn smooth. There are a lot of spikes here in the graph, but they're pretty much from high to higher. So it's not something that you'll notice too much. Again, we did have a couple dips below uh, 50 FPS, probably into about the uh, 40 FPS range, but overall pretty smooth playing game. Now, when you look at the 8370 side and you see minimum frame rates of 30.34 and average frame rates of 97.97, it almost appears the same, but I can assure you that the actual experience was a little bit different playing in game. Um, primarily when panning around your main character on the 8370, you are going to get a lot of stutters. I'm not really sure why it does that. This is the only CPU I've tested where this has happened. Even testing the uh, Pentium uh, G4560, I actually did not experience this issue, but there was a lot of stutter panning around Geralt. Uh, again, it's not something that showed up in the benchmark because obviously I'm not doing 360s around my character while I'm going through my uh, benchmark run, but it is just something to uh, note here. So the 1700 does provide an overall better experience despite being the uh, despite the FPS numbers being kind of similar. So yeah, and that's pretty much all of the benchmarks that I ran up until this point. As we can see, the 1700 absolutely destroys the 8370, both in productivity and gaming. So if you are still on the uh, pile driver or bulldozer uh, platform or AM3 platform, you need to go ahead and upgrade ASAP. Um, go ahead and like this video if you like this type of content. Um, let me know what you think down below and if you have any uh, questions about the 1700. But uh, I think that's about it guys. I am out of here for now. Oh, by the way, just random, did get in a Ryzen 5 1600. So that testing is going to be coming up soon. But anyways, I'm out of here. Till next time. See ya.